I have seen you have a very exciting program tonight. Um, we, our first speaker tonight is Shivani Sharma. Shivani is a senior director of engineering at Slack. Uh, so after having worked at Google, IBM, and Big Fix uh, during uh, 10 years, Shivani is now at Slack. And uh, despite having testified being passionate about engineering management, her transition from individual contributor to uh, manager hasn't been easy at first. So thank you very much, Shivani, for accepting to testify about your experience tonight. Hello. Can you all hear me? Great. Hi, everyone. This is such a great event. There's so many people here, and it's so awesome to see all of you here to make this event a success. I'm very excited. Um, so I, first of all, I wanted to thank Kwong and the Plato team. I'm truly honored that you've invited me to speak here tonight. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Shivani Sharma, and I'm a senior engineering manager at Slack. I'm also one of the organizers of a conference called Calibrate, which is focused on how to level up newly minted engineering managers and teach them day-to-day -day tactical tips that they can go and implement in their day uh, right after attending the conference. So a little bit about how I got acquainted with, with Plato. So Kwong reached out to me last December, last year, and he came to talk to me about Plato and how he was looking for engineering managers to join the community because it was a community he wanted to grow to help other engineering managers. And to make a, a network available to people to teach skills, give advice, um, even just how to give a great one-on-one, -on -one, there are so many things that you can learn from other people that is hard to get from books. So he asked me if I wanted to be a part of this. I said, of course I want to be a part of this. As an engineering manager, I enjoy leveling up the engineers around me. And so if I have a way to have an impact to level up other managers around me, I want to be a part of that because it's something I'm passionate about and that's why I became an engineering manager. So a little bit about how, how uh, well first, why I became an engineering manager. So, as an, engineering, uh, as an engineer and as a lead at some of the companies I've worked at, um, I, there, were, there were several things that I was doing consistently that were pointed out by my peers and by my managers. So the first one was resolving conflict on the team and keeping the team focused on the goals that we had to accomplish, especially under tight deadlines. And I was doing this consistently and just keeping the team focused. So not only was I leading the team on our initiatives technically, but I was also keeping the team gelled. So that, that dynamic, whether it was solving technical disagreements or even just personnel disagreements, because sometimes you know, we can all get a little emotional. Um, so that was one thing I was doing. The other thing was that I was bu building positive working relationships with the people that I worked with and with other folks throughout the organization. So that was also a consistent thing I did. And the third thing was that I really enjoyed coaching and mentoring others, whether it was the interns and being a part of putting together the intern summer program. And, you know, I really, it really, that was the part that actually fulfilled me the most to mentor and coach others. So, my actual transition to engineering management. Um, so, I made the decision to pursue a management career path uh, because. There were other leaders around me that, and including my manager, that validated that I was doing these things consistently and that I would be a good candidate for this. And getting that, that's something that I was thinking about, but hearing that from others also validate that gave me the confidence to be like, yes, this is what I wanna do, and actually work on a path for my manager to get there. So uh, a little bit about what that transition was like for me. So I actually, uh, eight years ago, I joined a startup company called Big Fix. And uh, a few years later, we got acquired by IBM. So being a company of 70 engineers, uh, well, first of all, the whole company was 150 people. And being acquired by a 400,000 person organization came with a lot of change. And we also went from having 70 engineers working on our technology to having locally to over 500 engineers working on our technology globally. So. It's, it might be similar to some of the experiences you have with a fast rising startup. So we had, I had my own version of scale there and that was, that proved challenges with processes and 
being a part of a big organization, even, and our hiring was different. It was more like other folks from IBM around the world working in other departments where we were hiring from other organization and departments to work on our technology because it was the new growth area. So uh, when I actually did get the opportunity to move into a manager, like this was, this was my environment. So the actual week that I started, it was quite interesting. So the announcement was made the last week of July. So my first week on the job was in August. So I, my, my new manager lived in Dublin, and my new peer managers and their, the other counterpart of the engineering team lived in Rome. So first week of August, there's a lot of European people here. Can you guess what it was like? It was quite lonely because everyone was on vacation. <laughs> I was the only person, and I'd never done this before. And I had my local team, but it was on an adjacent team that I didn't actually know what they were doing on a day-to-day -day level. So I relied a lot on my engineers. And at that point, I only had mentors that were engineers. I didn't have mentors that were other managers. And my actual manager and my peers were all unavailable. The other challenge to this was that my overlap with them every day was before 9 AM Pacific time. So I didn't exactly get very much time to bounce ideas or if I encountered something midday that I needed to have a difficult conversation with someone, how to navigate that. So that proved challenging as well. And uh, yeah, so I guess there's, there's three things that I hope that you take away from this. Uh, the first one is, I don't know if you've noticed, but I talked about this as, an, as a career path change. I did not say that it was a promotion. So I think it's important to know that if you are thinking about being an engineering manager, this is a lateral change. It is completely different. And there are some similarities, but the key difference is that as an engineer, you're responsible for lines of code and making that work in an efficient system. And as an engineering manager, you're responsible for groups of people and making that work as an efficient system. And as an engineer, you can tell the computer to do, you can write that code, and it will do the same thing every time. Humans don't exactly work like that. <laughs> So yeah, I guess uh, it's important to know that it's a lateral change. Um, the second thing is that I would get a mentor as soon as possible. I would get a mentor as soon as you're even seriously considering an engineering management path. Um, for me, when I did that transition, I pretty much buried myself in books. Every management book I can possibly get my hands on, and there's a lot of, a lot of books that people read these days. And I, trust me, I've read them all. I tried to learn. Um, the other thing is uh, some companies will have trainings. So at IBM, as you can imagine, there are really good trainings there. Uh, the first available training that I could attend was nine months out. So I really did have to read books and figure it out the first nine months, and I made a ton of mistakes. Um, so yeah, get a mentor as soon as possible. Books are great, but mentors are better. And the last point I wanted to make is that don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's gonna happen. Humans aren't predictable, and even if you perfectly planned out the talk that you're gonna have with someone, whether it's about a low performance or even a, comp a normal routine compensation discussion when it's around performance review time, they don't always go according to plan. You don't know what's always going, around, going on with people. And uh, I would say that the learning doesn't stop. I think it happens. You get really good at being an engineering manager, and then you manage managers, and then there's different challenges that come with that. So I think it's continuous learning, continuously iterating, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. All right, so we have a Slido. So we have a couple questions here. Were you frustrated not to code anymore? I feel like that's a question that gets and get asked a lot, and that's something that I think a lot of new engineering managers struggle with. Um, no, I was not frustrated when I didn't get to code anymore. Um, even when I was an engineering leader, like a tech lead on my team, I really enjoyed, I saw the effect that I had when I was able to resolve differences and keep the team focused on our goals. And at IBM, with lots of customers, uh, there's a lot of pressure sometimes and a lot of money tied to that. So 
being in that kind of an environment, I saw that how I was able to make an effect on getting these teams to gel, especially when we're growing and also working in a global company with engineers everywhere. So, um, and also because I specifically chose this path because I truly believe it is a lateral move and not a promotion, um, I think I was perhaps mentally prepared that this is what I'm gonna do and this is how I'm going to level up and impact others. Sorry, I keep switching. Um, how do you identify a mentor and what do you look for in a mentor? So I would, I would say the first thing is someone that's got a good deal of experience, um, whether it's similar to your environment, uh, whether you've been at only big companies or only small companies. So I think the types of experience that's, that this mentor has had. Um, the other thing I would say is that's important is that you should have a human bond with this person. You need to be able to talk about some hard things. Um, I've definitely gotten, ha ha have had some tough conversations with my mentor and even with some of my coaches, because um, some problems are hard. And uh, when you have a dysfunctional team, it can be extremely emotionally draining. And sometimes you just break down in front of that coach or in front of that mentor um, because you really want to help the people. I think empathy is a big part of being an engineering manager. and. Um, yeah, so I look, I look for that human connection, first and foremost. And how are we on time? One more question. Okay. What's your favorite book that explains your management philosophy? Ooh, that's a good one. I would say Peopleware is a good one. I forgot the author, but that's a good one. It kind of explains why people are, why certain teams are the way they are. Um, also, I very much and behind uh, Google's Aristotle project, which they did, and that was to try to figure out, there's actually an article, if you Google, uh, if you Google, Google Aristotle, um, you'll find an article that talks about how, what made a team productive. It was, they sliced and diced it by EQ, by personalities, introvert, extrovert. They had a number of parameters that they sliced and diced this information by. And they did this with a lot of teams, so they did with a big data set. What it came down to was so psychological safety. So when people have mutual respect and trust with one another, that is when they are more open to, their, to other people's ideas. They're better listeners with one another. And that is what creates that. That is when you can have this synergy of people creating, uh, being productive on a higher level. So in Google's project, they, they didn't say that the room with the highest IQs was most productive, because you can have a bunch of really, really smart people, but if they don't get along, they'll get nothing done. Um, so it's actually better to have people that gel well together, and that's why engineering management is so important. All right, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shivani.